Hi guys, and welcome again to Lore of the Cards, the series that looks to inform you of the lore hidden within your Hearthstone deck. Last time, we took a look at the Priestess of Elune and her goddess, the Peaceful Elune. Today, we have the card that you guys voted for. The Molten Giant merely crumbled before him. The daughter of Deathwing, Anixia, is now plotting her revenge because of this defeat. Even she could not overcome the undeniable savagery of the Beast. The art of the card is by Glen Rain, a name that Blizzard fans will be very familiar with also known as Rayman and one of Blizzard's elite art team who have dubbed themselves the Sons of the Storm. He defines his style of art as a painted comic book. Rain started his interest in art as a toddler but became serious about it when he hit high school and went on to study illustration at the Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. Warcraft 2 and Baldur's Gate inspired Rain to pursue a career in game art. At present, Rain now works for one of the companies that inspired him, heading several Blizzard art teams and producing a plethora of pieces and designs that have made it into all of Blizzard's major franchises. He's even made promotional work for the company's yearly BlizzCon events. There is loads more you can find out about Mr. Rain on his Deviant art page, as he's posted a pretty comprehensive FAQ. Name a Warcraft, Diablo or Starcraft lore character and it's very likely that Glen Rain will have made a piece on them. Thrall? Check. Jaina? Check. Sylvanas? Check. Arthas? Check. The Beast? Check. But when talking about the Beast, we are also talking about Finkel Einhorn. The art being produced by Jeff Miracola, who has worked as a freelance fantasy artist since 1993 for companies like Upper Deck Entertainment, Wizards of the Coast and Imagine FX magazine. The full image displays Finkel clambering out of the mouth of the beast. The beast is an elemental creature known as a core hound, two headed canines whose bodies are wreathed in flame. Fire lights their spines, and when the animals open their mouths, the light of roaring flames escapes their bodies. The imposing visage of the core hound is only one of its strengths in combat. More often than not, they are beasts of gargantuan proportion and are very quick to enrage. The beast itself possesses such great strength that it is able to hurl would-be adventurers from one side of a room to another, and he's not even the race's strongest. The Core Hounds originate from the Firelands, the elemental plane of fire. In its infancy, before the arrival of the Titans, Azeroth was a world of chaos, ruled over by the entities known as the Old Gods. The gods warred against each other, and within this realm of chaos, they flourished. To wreak destruction across the face of the planet, the Old Gods enslaved the elementals of Azeroth, and the opposing armies were each led by an elemental lord. Ragnaros was fire, Neptulon water, Therizane earth, and Alakir wind. The Titans seek to bring order to the universe, and when they came across Azeroth, they saw that the planet was in desperate need of their services. After a long war against the old gods and their elemental minions, the Titans were victorious. Most of the old gods were imprisoned, as the titans had found killing the god Yasaraj had had a devastating effect on the land of Azeroth, his final breath infecting what would become the continent of Pandaria with the Shah that would later run amok across the land in the Warcraft expansion Mists of Pandaria. The elemental lords were banished to the elemental planes created by the titans. Ragnaros and his minions were sent to the Firelands, a near uninhabitable plain for mortals, the air thick with noxious smoke and the land laden with lava pools. Ragnaros would later return to the world of Azeroth on two occasions, before being slain the second time, heroes chasing him to his own domain. With his first resurgence, one of the minions that came with him would be the massive core hound, Magmadar. This ravenous hound, one of Ragnaros's favoured pets, would become the origin of most of the core hounds in the service of Ragnaros on Azeroth. It is very likely that Magmadar is the beast's father, unless the beast also came through when Ragnaros returned. During a dwarven civil war between the Bronzebeard, Wildhammer and Dark Iron clans, Ragnaros was summoned back to Azeroth. 
After their capital of Grimbatol had been laid to waste by the Dark Irons, the Wildhammers allied with the Bronzebeards to take down the Dark Irons. With the Wildhammers and Bronzebeards marching toward their capital of Thalrissan, the Dark Irons acted, sensing their imminent defeat. The Emperor Thalrissan, yeah, he named the clan's capital after himself, was a powerful sorcerer and sought to summon a demon that would destroy his enemies. His spell proved to be too effective, summoning the Fire Lord Ragnaros to the world instead, breaking the chains that had bound him to the Firelands. Ragnaros burst into the world with such force that a volcano called Black Rock Mountain was created. With his arrival, many of Ragnaros' minions came with him. Thalrissan, the capital and the person were destroyed, the Wildhammers and the Bronzebeards fled, and the Dark Irons were enslaved by Ragnaros, worshipping him as a god. Ragnaros remained at the mountain he was birthed from, gathering his strength within the molten core at its depths. When he had gathered enough strength, he planned to return to his home and set Azeroth to the flame, claiming it as his own. In the interim, the first and second wars took place. The orcs arrived and were eventually defeated on Azeroth. The orcish horde were devastated, but a splinter group was formed that would later come to call themselves the Dark Horde, led by Render Main Blackhand, sons of the horde's first warchief. This Dark Horde made Black Rock Spire their home, the upper reaches of the Black Rock Mountain, which used to be the Horde's main base of operations during the Second War. The Orcs entered into an alliance with the Black Dragon Nefarian, first son of Deathwing and his prime consort. This alliance came in the nick of time, as the Dark Irons had grown tired of those that trespassed in their master's realm and launched an attack on the Orcs. With Nefarian's aid, the Dark Horde were able to hold on and establish a foothold within the Black Rock Spire. This bitter conflict raged on between Nefarian's forces, the Dark Horde were very much his pawns, and the forces of Ragnaros. The feud was extremely malicious, and any of Ragnaros' minions captured by Nefarian and his allies were brutally tortured and experimented upon. Nefarian was looking to create an ultimate dragonflight, possessing the powers of black, red, green, blue and bronze. His manufactured progeny were called the Chromatic Flight. One of Ragnaros' minions captured by the Dark Horde was the Beast. Again, the Dark Horde and Nefarian's dragonspawn delighted in torturing the Beast, causing it unimaginable agony. But where others died, the beast was so powerful that it managed to stay alive. Not only this, but the giant behemoth kept its sanity, remaining lucid enough to be repurposed by Nefarian. The beast was made a guard dog to the upper reaches of Black Rock Spire, his unwavering ferocity making him ideal for this task. The Beast used to be a skull-level dungeon boss in World of Warcraft, making him very powerful. He in fact used to be the only pet tameable by hunters that would retain this level after being tamed. As of the Cataclysm expansion, this was no longer the case. The Beast being demoted to a regular dungeon boss and the second last encounter of Upper Black Rock Spire. With the new Warlords of Draenor expansion, the Beast will be gone from the world forever. A mini-boss called Son of Beast will take his place though, to honour his memory. It is perhaps through his experiments on core hounds like the Beast that Nefarian was able to create Chromagus, a chromatic dragonkin that looks extremely similar to a core hound, but possesses the abilities of multiple dragonflights. The Beast would eventually be slain by adventurers attacking Upper Black Rock Spire, but with his death, his legacy in World of Warcraft did not end there. In the Cataclysm expansion, the Beast's mate, Beauty, joined forces with the Twilight's Hammer, who sought to bring about the end of days. Her and her four pups, Buster, Lucky, Runty and Spot, ooh, terrifying, sought to punish those that had killed the beast. In Hearthstone, when killed, the beast summons Finkel Einhorn for the opposing player, almost directly mirroring what happened in World of Warcraft. Only in WoW, the player needed to have the skinning profession to free Einhorn from his canine prison. Like many gnomes in Warcraft, Einhorn is a keen inventor. 
Finkel had invented a lava suit which allowed him to swim and wade through lava without suffering any burns at all. During a test run, backstroking through the molten span, a large pool of lava found in the Black Rock Mountain, the beast found Einhorn and swallowed the tiny gnome whole. The lava suit was so effective, it allowed Einhorn to survive within the beast's stomach for goodness knows how long, surviving the molten hot temperatures of the corehound's stomach and not being digested at all until his release. The beast's hide also used to be able to create epic equipment. Finkel sending adventurers to meet the Dark Iron blacksmith, Malifus Darkhammer. But this quest was later removed. After being freed from the beast, this was not the only time players saw Finkel Einhorn. He would be enlisted by the Guardians of Hygel, along with Raz the Orc, to investigate the re-emergence of Ragnaros, his second coming to Azeroth. Noticing the Twilight's hammer cultists moving some of Ragnaros' minions to a new wing in the Black Rock Mountain, the Black Rock Caverns, Finkel and Raz enlisted adventurers to help them. However, on entering the cavern before the adventurers, Finkel and Raz were immediately attacked by the cultists. Raz fought bravely, allowing his partner to escape, but was captured by the Twilight's hammer. When the adventurers arrived, Finkel begged them to save Raz and acted as a guide throughout the dungeon. When the heroes found Raz, he had been experimented on and mutated into an abomination of what he once was. Heroes saw Raz throughout the dungeon as they tried to chase him down to cure the rage-consumed orc. He obliterated the dark cultists until he met his end at the dungeon's final boss. After the death of Ascendant Lord Obsidius, Finkel mourned the passing of his companion, stating he was the best friend a gnome ever had. Finkel is later found imprisoned within the lair of a resurrected Nefarian, trapped in a cage behind one of the dragon's twisted creations, Chimeran, in the Blackwing's Descent Raid. Before and during this time, Finkel had been pondering his stay in the beast's stomach. The beast was capable of devouring anything with no negative effects. After first escaping, the beast's residual digestive fluids coated the gnome's suit which he used to run experiments. Finkel found that with the proper catalysts, the beast's bile was able to render anything to which it was applied to invulnerable. With his Bilotron 800, Finkel had harvested yet more Corehound bile and needed to further test this new protective fluid. The players became his guinea pigs, as Chimeran, without the Biobot active, was able to devastate the party. With the help of Finkel's invention, Chimeran was slain, and Finkel freed from his prison. It's never stated how the reckless gnome got captured in the first place. So, there you have it, the beast. Despite being a minor lore character, this furious corehound is tied to several key events in Azeroth's history. He followed Ragnaros to the world and fought the Dark Horde. Despite being captured, he was able to resist unspeakable torture and be repurposed as a guard dog. While the beast was officially killed in the vanilla game, his legacy would continue to be tied to the stories of characters in WoW's third expansion, Cataclysm. His mate becoming a dungeon boss and a morsel that survived being swallowed by him, Finkel Einhorn, being involved in several quest chains. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this episode of Lore of the Cards. If you did, please let others know about this series. Share, like and subscribe. All that good YouTube stuff. Of course, if you are enraged by the existence of this video, you can hit that dislike button. That will really show me. If you want to see more artwork, you can find the artists in the description below. So, now to vote for your next episode. Will it be Gromash Hellscream, Cabal Shadow Priest or Sunwalker? since this poor cow keeps being requested and never quite winning. Until next time guys, happy hearthstoning, and I'll see you for the next Lore of the Cards.